So my dog tried to cuddle with me. And by doing so, she gets up on the bed and proceeds to punch me so hard. Right in the part of my lady bits that is experiencing so much freaking pain right now. And she's a golden retriever who's extremely strong. Bailey. Why did you punch me? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is gonna be my official endometriosis surgery vlog. So what's gonna be in this video is the days going into my surgery and then also the recovery coming home from the hospital. Stay tuned for all of that. All right guys, so here we are in my room. I took out all the cat litter that used to be here because I don't want to, you know, smell cat litter while I'm recovering from surgery, especially because I, I struggle with nausea when I wake up from surgery, so definitely don't want to have any smells to set off my nausea. This is what my bed looks like. I will be spending a lot of time here, so I wanted to make sure it was super comfortable. So I went out and got myself a new blanket. And you could see the blanket is super soft. Sherpa blanket. And then also another fuzzy blanket. Sensory things are super important to me. As you can see, there is a cat. It's kind of hard to keep everything clean when you have two pets. And here we are in my nightstand. So this is something I really want to go over. Um, we have my water, candles, crystals, the pills I need, also the air purifier. And then, oh, hello. Here we have some of the essentials I'm going to be needing uh, when I come home from surgery. Let me just get my cat off of me. Here's just some of my endometriosis post-surgery essentials. Here we have alkaline water. Every week I fill this jug up with alkaline water because it's the most nutritious. And then I have a lot of, you know, liquids that I can drink coming out of surgery because I'm not going to be eating much when I come home so it's important for me to drink a lot of, of the salt and sugars and electrolytes that I need to replenish that. Two boxes of Ritz crackers because from last time I had surgery when I woke up from anesthesia I couldn't eat anything but this for like two three days so Definitely stocked up on some Ritz crackers, stocked up on a lot of juice. Also important, you won't be showering for a few days, if not a week, so having some baby wipes to wipe your body is super important so that you don't have to leave your room technically to clean yourself. Also some period underwear. Here, I have a few pairs already. I have a few pairs of period underwear because this is what I opt to use when I am bleeding. I don't use pads or tampons. I haven't for a few years now. I had a really scary experience with tampons and ever since then I just didn't want to use those things. And they were just super uncomfortable and had a lot of waste. So um, I've switched to period underwear a while ago and I haven't regretted it at all. It's been really great. It's super comfortable, it's sustainable. So I'll just show you guys what my period underwear looks like. So you could see here, there is some like, I don't know what material they use specifically, but it absorbs your blood pretty well and it leaves you feeling really dry. Unlike pads, period underwear actually has a dry texture when you're bleeding, whereas pads can feel kind of like dirty diapers. And so I actually believe that period underwear is more comfortable. 
You can see the fabric is super soft, super comfortable, super absorbent. So I have three different absorbent period underwears because a lot of women with endometriosis probably can relate to this, but my period's heaviness is so up and down. The first few days is extremely heavy and then it completely like tapers off to nothing. I have three different absorbencies so that I am basically covered anytime I have my period. Hello you guys. So just winding down for the night. My cat has not left my side. She's just been laying on me constantly. I've been experiencing a lot of inflammation this past week. So I think I am in the middle of a flare up right now, which is so ironic because I haven't had a flare up like this in a while. So it's weird that it's happening like right before my surgery. Also, I'm not on my period, so not sure exactly why I'm having a flare up but I guess that's just how our bodies are. Maybe my body's wanting to ovulate, but is not supposed to, don't know. But yeah, I've been experiencing pain this week. My breathing's been really bad this week as well. I was actually editing my video that I just posted and I had to edit out a lot of my like heavy breathing in between sentences because it sounds like I just ran a marathon and it's kind of embarrassing. And granted, my breathing's always bad, but it's just been particularly bad this past week where, and this will happen every once in a while, like once every other month or something, where my breathing gets really, really bad, worse than normal, and my ribs and my chest and my shoulder starts to have excruciating pain. Like it's honestly at this point such a norm for me that it's kind of scary that i am so used to this and i don't want to be because like my pain tolerance is so high that i'm able to live day by day with this pain obviously i have no choice but i don't i get kind of claustrophobic in my body sometimes when i realize that this is going to be a chronic thing and worsening and I just started to feel that this past week with my breathing issues having like got, getting worse and all the pain I've been experiencing. I start to feel claustrophobic in my body. It, I get this sensation of like, oh, I should just be able to switch my soul into another body that works, but I can't do that. Like I have this body for the rest of my life. And it kind of freaks me out sometimes that the body that I have for the rest of this life is going to be a very painful body to be in um yeah so those are some thoughts that go through my head i wonder if any of you with endometriosis or chronic pain have thoughts like that as well where you feel claustrophobic in your own body hello it's a rainy day here in the bay area still the afternoon but super chilly i did my morning routine which is just some breathing exercises feeding my dogs making myself some coffee and taking my dog on a walk and now I'm just waiting to receive the phone call from my surgeon to talk about the surgery. Hey guys, so a little bit of an update. It's the day before surgery. I finally received a call from my surgeon. I asked her a bunch of questions. And so one, I told her about the diaphragmatic endometriosis and she was like, during the laparoscopy, I would be looking at your diaphragm anyways, but you know, just because you emphasize that you think you have the diaphragmatic endometriosis, I'm gonna be even more detailed than perhaps like, I think she was kind of figuring out how to word that because she doesn't wanna make it seem like she's not careful because she's a specialist in endometriosis. And I believe her, like she's very knowledgeable about all of this, but she just wanted to comfort me as to telling me she's gonna be very, very in depth with looking into me and seeing where my endometriosis is and cutting it out. She told me that she is gonna use excision. That's how she does her surgeries. And if she finds endometriosis in my diaphragm, she says she is going to use ablation because specifically for diaphragmatic endometriosis, it's more dangerous to do excision because you don't want to be cutting around the lungs and diaphragm. 
So she said ablation is what is used for diaphragmatic endometriosis because the last thing you want is to like puncture anything that has to do with breathing, right? So that's like a little update. I also found out as well that I'm not gonna be staying overnight like I thought I would. I thought I was going to be staying, you know, overnight after my surgery and also the next day, but that's not the case. She told me that after surgery is over, surgery takes around three hours if it goes as planned. When I wake up from surgery, I'm gonna have two hours to kind of just be in the hospital and to wake up and feel a little bit more cognizant. And then they're gonna actually have me get picked up by my ride after the two hours. And so I'm not gonna be staying overnight in the hospital. I'm not too sure how I feel about that, but my specialist said that there's a lot of studies that indicate that women who go through the surgery actually recover better at home. I don't know, she didn't really go into what that meant. I'm assuming it's like psychological, but she was like, you don't need to be in the hospital. I'm giving you all the medicine you need to manage the pain. So it would be the same if I had stayed in the hospital, then I would be recovering at home. So I may as well be in a familiar environment so I could feel more comfortable. And I understand that part. So I guess we'll just see how that is. Hopefully I'll be fine. She made it sound like I would be fine, like the surgery wasn't gonna be terrible. Obviously she said I'm gonna experience pain when I wake up and during recovery, but that's kind of the case for all the surgeries. So this is my medication that I just picked up today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I literally picked up seven bottles of medication today. I know it's a lot. Even the pharmacist was like, you have so much medication, are you okay? And I was, I don't know if that's appropriate for her to say that, but I was just like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have surgery, so this is what my doctor prescribed me. And she was kind of looking at me with empathetic or pitiful eyes. And she was like, I'm so sorry, I hope you're okay. <laughs> and um, I guess that was a good way to give some perspective of like, this is intense because sometimes I'm just like, oh, this is normal. This is what I have to do. In reality, a lot of people would see this as a very intense situation. Hey guys, pardon my appearance. I obviously just had surgery, so I'm in way too much pain to try to look decent, but Yesterday was my surgery day. I was there since 10.30 a.m. and I didn't go home till 8 p.m. The surgery went over three hours, which is three hours is kind of like the normal amount, but I think I went over three hours because I had a lot of endometriosis. From what my surgeon told me, they found a lot, so they had to make sure they cut them all out. I had endometriosis, I had fibroids so those were like the main two things that i had inside me i think i had fibroids growing on my uterus but my doctor <clears throat> my doctor gave me like pictures of all the endometriosis and fibroids i'm not going to show you guys that because i think that's not appropriate for youtube and i don't want my video getting taken down also my voice if you could tell is different because when they put the breathing tube down your throat, it makes your throat feel like you have a sore throat. So it's funny because going into the surgery, I almost started gaslighting myself again. And I was just like, what if they don't find anything? What if I'm just imagining the pain? Or like, what if my pain tolerance is super low? And so I do have normal period cramps, but for some reason I can't handle it. And that's just kind of like the sad truth of for a lot of women who are trying to navigate the medical system with their endometriosis, you're most likely being gaslighted doctor after doctor. At least that was my experience. Of course, there's other women out there who are very, their medical team around them is very careful and cares about them. So immediately they will say things like, you have endometriosis, you need to get surgery for it. But for me personally, that wasn't my experience. I went through multiple doctors and OBGYNs before one of them referred me to the specialist. And yeah, 
I talked to my anesthesiologist about my nausea. I talked to the nurses, the doctor. So like everyone involved knew I had really bad nausea and to be careful about it. My anesthesiologist came and talked to me before surgery and she said that I check off a lot of the checklists that they have when it comes to post anesthesia nausea. She said, if you're a woman, you're more likely to wake up with nausea. And two, she says, if you're a non-smoker, you have more of a chance to wake up with nausea. Three is like, if you're younger, I think. I forgot the fourth one, but basically she told me that I was susceptible to nausea. So what they did is they gave me a scolamine patch behind my ear. I don't know if you guys could see it. It's supposed to help reduce your nausea. And I've used this once before when I went fishing with my friend's family. And I'm glad to report to you guys that I woke up from my surgery and I didn't vomit once. So my anesthesiologist really, really took care of me. All right guys, so this is two days post-op. <clears throat> my throat is a little weird and sore. My voice sounds weird because of the tube that they put down your throat during surgery, so. <clears throat> still like kind of getting rid of all the phlegm and also just the raspy voice but i will show you guys my incisions and how it looks i get all of my period underwear through the website thinks i think it's like thinks or she thinks i'll leave the link down below if you guys want to purchase some but i have different absorbency levels so i have the high absorbency which always works for me i've never leaked through it even though I wear this period underwear for like a year and a half now. Literally like never leak through it. It's super comfortable, super dry. So it doesn't give you that sensation that pads do where it feels very moist and disgusting down there like you're wearing a diaper, you know? So it doesn't feel like that. So I've been bleeding a lot since after surgery. I knew this was gonna happen, which is why I prepped for it, but yeah, it's kind of like having a really heavy period. So I think that's it. I'm gonna show you my incisions now. So my period underwear, super comfortable. And then <clears throat> here are my incisions. I'm still extremely bloated. I'm like slowly starting to fart it all out. I just took a number two. So you have one here, 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 and here. Um, my doctor advised me that when I take a shower to just let the, the tape soak through and then to take off the tape then. And I don't think I'm planning on showering for another few days just to be safe. I'm gonna wait till like the pain goes away. So I'm probably gonna wait like five days, maybe a week before I shower. Um, oh yeah, the pain level. So I haven't really seen women talk about the pain level, especially in detail. So that's something that I look for. Therefore, I want to talk about it so that women can, you know, kind of be mentally prepared for what they may experience coming out of surgery. And the pain level is not that bad, but granted, I have a high pain tolerance. I think most women have to. I feel like women with endometriosis can experience a 10 out of 10 pain level, but then we don't express it or like fully understand the power of that pain. We just think it's normal because we lived with the chronic illness for so long. That's why when I'm experiencing pain and the nurse is like, oh, how are you doing? I have to like really take a while to reflect because even though my pain is 10 out of 10, I would say things like, oh, it's fine because I'm so used to just kind of like meditating through. So the pain that I feel is mostly in my abdominal region where that those incisions are because I think most of her excision surgery was done in that area. And the pain is not from the incisions, it's from the places in my body where she cut the endometriosis out. <clears throat> So the pain feels kind of like a sharp pain, if that makes sense. So it's like, if you move your body a certain way, or if you try to stretch it out a little bit, you will feel that sharp pain, or I do. Normally, like I feel like I experience dull aches more, but coming out of surgery, it feels more like a sharp pain where like 
if you find the right positions to sit in or lay in, it won't feel as severe, but as soon as you move even a little bit outside of that position, it feels like knives are like sticking to the insides of your body. But I have to say, it's not anything I can't manage. And I'm sure a lot of you will feel the same way because you guys probably all have high pain tolerance. And as long as you're staying on top of your medication, it's more than enough manageable. Two days post-op, I'm already able to get up on my own, walk around, go to the bathroom. I could even lean down to like wash something, wash my hands, uh, wash my period underwear, stuff like that. So yes, pretty good so far. I thought it would be a lot worse than what I'm experiencing today, but yeah, if this gives you guys any peace of mind, I hope it does because I know you could feel very overwhelmed with how intense this surgery can be. But yeah, they didn't even keep me in the hospital for a day. They just sent me home like three hours after my surgery and I was fine. I didn't throw up. The pain isn't excruciating. It's just, and this is why it's so hard to explain. And I feel like women with endo will understand me when I say like the pain is kind of 10 out of 10, but you could still very much manage it. Like it seems very counterintuitive, right? It's like the pain is 10 out of 10, yes. So normal people who experience that will be like, oh my God, I'm like bedridden, I can't do anything. But for women like us, it's like, yeah, it hurts a lot, but I could still get up and walk and do things, right? Cause that's the shit we have to go through on a day-to-day -day basis leading up to the surgery. So yeah, I hope this gives you guys a peace of mind. I will check in with you guys maybe a few days later or tomorrow, we'll see. Hey people, six days post-op. And I'm giving myself two weeks to kind of heal. Little bit of an update. Physically, I don't feel the pain anymore. The pain I feel is mainly at my incisions because the incisions are deep. So just feeling that tenderness there also when I'm moving around too much, I have to be careful because I'll feel the tugging at my incisions. So just have to be careful with that. So far, I'm still resting a lot on the bed, but I will get up at least once a day to go on a walk, whether that's to walk my dog or kind of walk around the house. And I don't go on walks without the supervision of at least one person, which is my caretaker, which is my partner. So I'll usually go on a walk with my partner for the past few days, very, very slowly, just to get some body movement in. I can't even go to the bathroom without my cat trying to sit on my lap. Hello? Can mama have some privacy? Can mama have some privacy? <laughs> um, I'm well loved here. So my dog tried to cuddle with me. And by doing so, she gets up on the bed and proceeds to punch me so hard right in the part of my lady bits that is experiencing so much freaking pain right now. And she's a golden retriever who's extremely strong. Bailey. Why did you punch me? Do you not know that mama just had really intense surgery? This is the second time you hurt me with your very intense, strong movements. I really want to cuddle with you, but if you're making this painful, hey, hey, look at me. Look at me, Bailey. Bailey. Bailey, look at me. If you're going to make this painful for me, I can't cuddle with you. Okay? I can't cuddle with you if you're going to make this a painful experience for me. 
For all I know, you probably ripped open my incisions again. Yeah, but in all seriousness, that was so painful. <laughs> like, I literally started crying because I was in so much pain and was not expecting 80 pounds of muscle to just punch me right where my, I don't know what she punched. Was it my uterus? Was it my ovaries? I don't know, but it hurts. <sighs> Fuck. So yeah, day eight post-op. I haven't had a good poo in days. I've been trying to poo. I've been taking all the medication I need to to poo, but just it's not happening. It doesn't feel good. Um, I'm getting a lot of period cramps, but no bleeding. So that's what I'm dealing with. Hey guys, if you've gotten this far, I just want to thank you for watching my endometriosis surgery vlog. Sorry, I did hook up my camera to a microphone because my neighbors are doing some sort of work cutting wood or something and it's super loud. So if I don't use this mic, you will not be able to hear me. But I just kind of want to wrap this video up with some of my thoughts the sensations I'm feeling, and then kind of show you guys what my incisions look like. So I think I am officially nine days post-op right now. I thought my pain levels were kind of tapering off, but you can never be too certain, right? They do tell you that it takes up to three months to fully recover, and that's like the normal amount. So if women have worse endometriosis, in regards to stage or where it's growing, obviously that's going to lengthen the amount of recovery time and depending on the type of surgery you have, that's going to also elongate your recovery time. I have a friend that is still recovering from her operations of endometriosis. She had two surgeries and it took her almost two years to recover and she's still recovering. So every woman is different, I just want to say that. As you watch all of these endometriosis surgery vlogs and videos and you start to take note on the sensations a lot of women feel and how their body reacts to their surgeries, always be open to the fact that you will be different. And so that could be used to your advantage or disadvantage, right? A lot of women, when they're doing their research, can almost start to scare themselves. I know I was like that. But at the end of the day, what I told myself to allow myself to feel better about it is that ultimately you just don't know how you're going to react, how your body's going to feel and almost allow that unknown to comfort you. For all you know, your surgery and how you recover may go a lot smoother than other women out there. And you know, that's something I also want to say is if you have endometriosis, that is already the hardest part, honestly. Like, I just want to comfort women out there who are scared for their surgery because it's coming up or whatever, that the hardest part is just dealing with the endometriosis without the treatment, without the surgery. Getting the surgery done, recovering from it is honestly so much easier than dealing with the normal flare-ups that you get and dealing with the symptoms of fatigue, dealing with the symptoms of pain, dealing with the symptoms of not being able to breathe, not being able to eat a lot of the foods without feeling even worse after, and all of the lists of symptoms that endometriosis gives you. The hardest part of endometriosis surgery is the part leading up to it and just dealing with endometriosis. And with that being said, I am going to show you guys what my incisions look like. So if any of you get squeamish about it for whatever reason, I guess don't watch this next part, but it's honestly not that bad because it just looks like scratches. Okay guys, so these are what my incisions look like one over one week post-op. 
They kind of just look like scratches. You could still feel the stitches that is holding it together. Those will, will kind of dissolve and fall out over time naturally. And I did notice I had these dots here that were scabbed over. I'm not sure what it is, but it's not incisions. I, I guess it's just some sort of marking. And yeah, just waiting to see how long it'll take for the stitches to fall out and what my incisions will look like. And sorry, I'm, I'm extremely bloated, you guys, because I haven't had a normal bowel movement in like over a week ever since the surgery. So I've just been feeling extremely bloated. And I'm gonna kind of go down a list of some of my symptoms. I thought my, my pain was kind of tapering off after like four to five days and I kind of bit the bullet too hard. I stopped taking my pain medication and I started walking more because I thought it was going to be good for me. And so I went on a walk this morning with my dog and my partner without my pain medication because I thought I would be good. And also I've been super, super constipated from the pain medication. So I was like, oh, I could go off the pain meds. I could start walking more. I could start to take craps again and have a normal bowel movement for the first time this past week. But it just, it wasn't good. I came back from the walk and I was experiencing a lot of pain issues with breathing. And the pain isn't the same. I'm gonna try to describe the pain I'm feeling like a week out of the operation. When you come out of surgery, the pain is more sharp and you feel like these tugs and pulls on certain areas of your body where the operation was done and your incision, but kind of like a week out from surgery, the pain is more dull. So I feel the pain in my ribs. Like when I breathe, it feels like my ribs are kind of like bruised. So when I breathe, it has that dull ache and I have that dull ache in my chest too. I don't know why, really weird, but those are the sensations I've been getting. I took my pain medication and it's finally kicking in like an hour later, but yeah, stay on top of your pain medication. Don't get too cocky like I did and just go off cold turkey. It's not worth it. Just taper off slowly. Don't underestimate the pain. Don't underestimate it. And also, I've been super constipated. I've been staying on top of the medication that my doctor prescribed me to have normal bowel movements and fight the constipation, but it's not really been working. Prepare for that as well, even though you are gonna be taking stool softener and the medication to help with constipation. It's, for me at least, not really working with the bowel movements, but I have kind of accepted it now and I know that this is just part of the recovery process and I just will give myself a month probably to finally start weaning off the pain medication and start having normal bowel movements again. That's what I'm dealing with a week out from the endometriosis surgery is the dull aches, having to be consistent with the pain medication, slowly weaning off of it, and also the intense constipation. Also, I've been experiencing a lot of cramping as well in my uterus. I don't know if that's from the surgery or because my doctor inserted the Mirena IUD during my surgery. And that's something else I wanted to mention is if you're going to do your endometriosis surgery, talk about the options to get the IUD inserted while you're under anesthesia because getting the IUD inserted is very, 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 very painful, which is why I never wanted to do it. But my doctor suggested to me to get it inserted while I was under anesthesia so I don't have to go through the pain. And she said, getting it taken out is not painful as it is getting it inserted. And I've seen so many horror stories of women on TikTok talking about the intense pains that they get from the Mirena IUD so that was inserted while I was under, didn't feel it obviously, but I do th believe I'm experiencing the cramping that you get after you have the Mirena IUD inserted because I've been getting consistent period cramps 
since surgery all the way up until now, every time I laugh, I could feel like my uterus just feeling very tender and heavy. So that's another sensation I'm kind of working through. Although the bleeding, the vaginal bleeding stopped, I do have liquid coming out of my lady bits still. It's just kind of like clear liquid. It's very thin. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's from the IUD or whatever, but that's also another symptom that I've been having. But yeah, thank you guys for watching so much. If you have endometriosis and you're about to have surgery or you're pursuing surgery, I hope this video answers a lot of your questions and gives you a peace of mind. Trust me, you'll be fine. You'll do great. And if you want to stay tuned with my endometriosis journey, I'm going to probably make a video post-operation after three months when I fully recover and maybe even like a year later talking about how my chronic illness is and how it feels a year later from the operation. So if you're curious about any of that, please subscribe, please like the video and leave a comment. But I'm just so thankful for anyone who has joined this community and subscribed to my channel so far. I'm just looking forward to slowly but surely growing my community and also continue to make videos and connect with you guys. Yeah, here's to a more pain-free life at the age of 25. Thank God. I finally reached this point and I hope any of you out there with endometriosis reaches this point too. But anyways, I will see you guys on my next video. Until next time, bye guys.